You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Guys, thanks for listening. Uh, you know, you guys, for the most part, listen to every episode. If you're here for the Phelps brothers, I've become good friends with these guys. They're fantastic human beings. This is such an open and honest conversation you're going to have. But before you listen, I would just ask you if you like this episode and you're like, hey, I like the interview. I want to listen to more of this guy. We've got so many great interviews, and I hope you'll you'll tune in and uh, subscribe. We're on all the platforms um, at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook at Inside of You Pod on the Twitter. And um, we really talk about mental health and life and so many other things. And if you uh, would like to support the podcast more, I'd appreciate it. Subscribe, write a review. It helps tremendously. And if you really want to support the podcast, if you, you know, more than anything, join Patreon, patreon.com slash inside of you. There's tons of perks, but you give back to the show and it helps us produce the quality shows that we want and that you want. And that's patreon.com slash inside of you. Um, perks like getting your name shouted out every episode, perks like Zooms with me, perks like uh, YouTube lives with me, perks with uh, merch discounts and uh, behind the scenes, all, all sorts of fun stuff, uh, packages sent to me and signed by me. I give little gifts and things like that. Anyway, um, I hope you'll join. Also, the Inside of You online store, we've got awesome stuff like sweatshirts and tumblers and small little scripts and all that jazz. So check that out. And I'm on the cameo and doing a bunch of cons. So look on my link tree on Instagram at the Michael Rosenbaum. You can see where I'm going, where Tom Welling and I are going. Uh, come to an evening with Michael and Tom that we do in cities. And Sunspin, my band, lastly, these are the new tumblers. If you go to sunspin.com, you can get one of these. They're pretty much badass. But more importantly, we're playing a show on September 16th, Saturday at 5 p.m. Love your, uh, your company. And uh, we'll shout out the questions and names and all that stuff. We play music. There's prizes, Zooms. It's great music. I hope you'll enjoy September 16th, 5 p.m. Go to stageit.com, type in Sunspin, or just go to sunspin.com and get tickets. Uh, really appreciate your support. Great guests. Ryan, how are you? I'm all right. You're all right? Yeah. Yeah, still going to therapy? Still going to therapy. Yeah? A little stressed? A little stressed. Life's a little bit in flux right now, but I'm... I'm doing okay with it. I feel like it. everybody's kind of feeling like that. You it's, know? A, it's a weird time. It's a weird time. I don't know why. In the industry, especially. Mercury in retrograde, is that a thing? I, I I've never know. said that before in my life. Is that actually What does happening? it actually mean? I have no idea. Yeah, great. Well, I hope uh, <laughs> things get better for everyone. Everyone, including you guys out there. I hope you're taking care of yourself, your mental health, and uh, trying to exercise, trying to do things differently, breaking bad habits. All you can do is try. One foot in front of the other. And uh, being good to yourself is is a big part of it. Um, Phelps Brothers, you guys know them from the Harry Potter movies. Um, they have a, a, a another show, a reality show they're doing together, a travel show, which is awesome. And they got me to do a, a travel show. So John Heater and I, Napoleon Dynamite, I'm like, geez, why are we traveling? We're doing a, a show called Scared. And we go to the creepiest places in the world. And there's my little puppy. Oh. Hi, Charlie. Look how cute Charlie. Charlie is. Come here, Charlie. Hello. Uh, I love these guys. I've hung out with them many times, and it's always a treat, and they really get deep. So let's get into Oliver and James Phelps, also known as the Phelps Brothers. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Hey folks, wanted to highlight something important before today's episode. In case you weren't aware, myself and many of the guests are on strike alongside SAG, AFTRA, and WGA. Today's episode and any we air before the strike ends were recorded before it began. So this is just a heads up in relation to some for the topics we may discuss. If you want more info on the strike, visit SAG after strike. Dot org. Now let's get into it. Aren't people in England supposed to look older <laughs> for their age? <laughs> no, I thought, no, no, Americans look older, don't they? Like, look at Greece. They're all meant to be in high school, right? Yeah. <laughs> that is very true. That is very, very true. Um, what a treat having you guys. I, I Last time I saw you was Australia. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that was, that was fun. Trip. That was fun. fun. Trip. Really fun trip, yeah. It's um, 
yeah, I know we spoke about doing it then. So yeah, it's great to be able to actually sort it out finally. I know. And be able to uh, be able to get things going. It's awesome. You got yeah. It's not easy to 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 pin you down because you're doing a lot. Are you guys still doing the podcast? Normal, not normal. Still, are you still doing that? Or are you now just doing the travel show? No, at the moment it's just the the travel show because simply because well, you know how you obviously know how much work goes into making podcasts and all that kind oh, of stuff. And yes. um, whilst we were traveling as well, it was quite a long time uh, when we we're away from our especially when we we're at home. Uh, we we're away from our families enough that we kind of wanted to be at home, like actually at home instead of actually. I'm just going to nip to the office for a couple of hours. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So I was just talking uh, before we started recording. By the way, I never call you Ollie. Do you hate Ollie? You have to hate it. No, no. It's actually what most of my mates call me, to be honest. So it's all good. Ollie and Jimmy or Jimbo, what do they call you? Uh, do you know, I've got so many different people call me so many different things. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite funny. I, I don't, do you have this like different people where you say you filmed in different locations or you spend a period of time? Do those people know you? Obviously, they know your site different ways. People from other parts of so, my pals in London call me like Jim. My my best mate who's also from London call me Jay. My pals here call me Jimmy. People in, in I, I uh, know where we grew up. Yeah, yeah I know. I mean, like yeah, yeah. So whatever you want to call me, I'm I'm good. Okay, asshole. So here's the uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it's funny because yeah, my uncle will go Mike. He'll call me Mike. My uncles will call me Mike. My dad will say Michael. My mom will say Mikey. Some friends will call me Rosie. Some, you know, it's like it's just all over the place. But uh, what a boring start to this conversation. Um, <laughs> now, look, you guys do a lot of stuff together. I mean, obviously, how many Harry Potter Potter movies you did? Eleven? Is it ten or 11? how many? <laughs> no, eight. Did, did eight? Seems eight like eleven. Over. Seems like 10 or 11. eleven years. Yeah, eight years. You did that together. Do you guys, it, it, I mean, I have, you, you know, John Heater, who we had dinner with, Napoleon Dynamite. He's a good buddy of mine. And, um, you know, he has a twin brother, Dan, and they can say the same thing at the same time. They will, they think alike. They like the same thing. Everything is is like, wow, They there's minimal differences in these guys with these guys. What about you guys? Are there bigger differences or do you hate to say that there's not a lot of differences but what are the differences? He's going first with this one, yeah. Um, I would say, not 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 to the point of, of obviously the guys because they are, yeah, as you say, they're very um, probably more connected, maybe in that that frame. If you know what I mean, like the finishing times tend to say the same stuff at the same time. Um, I think there was a, probably a time when we would do something very very similar to that. Probably the more time you spend with each, with each other maybe you, you get like that but i think in other tendencies we're very different in terms of you know in terms of like uh how you how you think how you how you perceive yourself how you interact with other people as well maybe there's a difference there like there's um yeah so i think i think you do see differences in in that and it's quite funny when people may look at you and think oh, they must they look the same they must act the same they must have the same thing <laughs> And it's, 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 it's quite funny when after a while you speak to someone and they say, oh, yeah, you, you guys are quite quite different in terms of, you know, like you're, you're more chatty in this scenario, whereas you're more laid back in that scenario. And yeah. There's differences all around. What about you, James? Because I always perceive when I meet you guys, you're both really friendly and open and smart and you're good with the fans. I see fans even coming in at when we went to the little bar after dinner and they're coming to you. They don't re recognize me or Heater or anything, but they're just going straight to you guys, the Weasleys. And I'm like, fuck, you know, these guys are popular. But you're always so friendly and open. But I definitely see, and tell me if I'm wrong, James is a little more reserved than Ollie. Is that true? Uh yeah, to a degree. Well, in I'm I'm very much I'm more than happy at times to be an observer kind of thing. Like I, um, I I, I enjoy like surveying the room and surveying the, the what's going on, and then kind of uh, chip in with a a comment now and then. So <laughs> 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 like, what's the what's um I was reading I was reading a book years ago, and it. It was very. I, I can't actually remember the title of it now, but I remember that the the lead character was kind of always aware of people who don't speak a lot, but when they speak, you listen more. 
Mm. If that makes sense. So I always, if I'm meeting new people, I, I purposely try and do that so I'm not over over meing them. You know what? That's if, really funny to say that because <clears throat> now I know why no one listens to me. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. I'm always talking. But you're I'm an exception to the rule. We can you can hear you coming. That's all right. I guess I wouldn't say they don't listen to me. I think I have, you know, good ideas and things and they listen, but, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, I, I, I see it, but there's nice that there's a little bit of a difference like that. You know, um, I think it works for your show and what's the, what's the name of the show again? The, the fantastic the travel friends show. travel show. You mean the fantastic friends travel show. <laughs> well, it's just fantastic friends. Yeah. So, um, yeah, think about it. So we, we wrap season two and, um, I was gutted we couldn't we couldn't get you on this one. I know. Uh, I wish that the dates would have aligned for that one, but we'll do it. We'll do it. Season, we'll get we'll get there one day. Um, but yeah, so we we wrapped on that recently, so we're now in the post production stages. Um, but it was it was really cool. We had a, a lot of fun, and um, for those guys who have seen the first season, um, it's pretty much 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 more of the same where we go to different locations with a new guest every week. And it's a lot of it was trying new things. So I'm more of like, I, I would rather go in a, you know, I'd rather jump off a bridge and some, <laughs> something, something silly, like, well, something adventurous and adrenaline pump like that. Whereas Oliver's a bit more, he'd rather go to like find a nice food places and um, yeah. you know, a bit more culture. And <laughs> uh, the guests would normally be somewhere in between. So we kind of want to show that you could go away into a, a new place. But actually, if you're with someone else, you do things which you wouldn't necessarily do before. And that may be something that may be the highlight of your trip when right. you wouldn't necessarily realize that would be it. It's kind of like a married couple in a lot of ways. You got to compromise because, you know, Oliver likes to do his thing. You want to do your thing. So you're like, all right, we'll go to your thing, your art gallery. We'll check out some art shit. And then we're going to go skydiving. You cool with that? And you kind of work it out there. I mean, is that sort of the way it works? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, kind of. I mean, we were the the way the concept came about um, a couple of years ago. I remember James and I we had uh, appeared at a convention in Colorado and had a really great weekend with everyone there. I think it was like the Fourth of July weekend, so it was a big, big weekend type festivity type thing. And afterwards, James and his pal um, wanted to go um, white water rafting, and they were climbing some mountains and stuff and i was i was going to try we were do doing the, the side of it we were going to do the the 14 so we're going to do a load of the fourteen thousand feet mountains mm -hmm. around the rockies in, in colorado and white water rafting and all that kind of stuff so they were they were down to do that and i was about i don't know if you were there actually at, at, at that convention when we were there i kind of think i was because i i remember now, i just remember being in the car I, on the way to the airport yeah. with you guys once and you were telling me about it is that right yeah yeah because we we Maybe. just i remember like literally about a day the day before i flew out i was in a, a pretty gnarly car accident and in hindsight shouldn't have gone but anyway that's a different story <laughs> and i was like after the after the show i was like I've got, I'll, well, I won't do the white water rafting or anything like that, but I'll come, I'll come down. You know, it's uh, like in color, it's just south of Colorado Springs. So I ended up doing the Monaco incline, which was just not fun. It's like literally climbing railway sleepers for, yeah, it's one of those things when you do it, you're like, okay, this is great, but I don't know how people do it more than once. That was the way I perceived it. You know, I look over and James is absolutely buzzing, absolutely <laughs> loving it. Um, it's I don't know that's so, I, so I don't those who don't know, it's, like, it's literally a, it's literally a a mile up, like straight up. What? And it's at times it gets to like eighty percent gradient, so you're pretty much scrambling up there. Um, like a ladder. At an altitude, remember, obviously, because you're in Colorado. Well, oh. I remember doing that and just thinking, I don't know if that was to do with because I'd got like really bug in my neck or I had like, you know, three broken ribs or something. But I was like, I don't want to do this again. I've done that. <laughs> and um and then after his change, I've booked to the hotel down the road. And we just come from, like they say, we've been in been in Denver, stayed in a nice hotel, met loads of nice people. And we were literally staying in this motel, um, like side of the road job, like $19 cash for the place to stay there overnight. You know, the type of place where you've got to move the closet in front of the door when you go to sleep. Oh, yeah. That type I of place. Know. And I was thinking... I know people think we we obviously look the same, but we're definitely different when it comes to this because this would not have been the type of place I would have 
I'd want to stay, you know, to book. So do you now, remember that hotel, like, though? Yeah, for all the wrong reasons. I don't think and you do you remember, remember the one in hotel. Denver? The nice one in Denver, you don't really remember too much, but you remember that one, so that's the memory. <laughs> I, rest I, my can case. Me- I can have mem- I can have memories over much better things than fear of my safety. But anyway, um, <laughs> the <laughs> and then afterwards, I was like, "There's got to be something in this because," and it just shows the two types of travel you can have. You can have a, a high end or a low end or a, or adventurous or relaxing or a cultural or a whatever. So we 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 picked the idea around, and eventually we we landed with the guys at Dash Pictures, and they they really dug it. Um, and then we thought, well, let's get someone else involved. So it changed. So each episode is not just us going, and it's just us in a different place. But if you've got a different guest, and that can totally change the dynamic of of where you are and what you're doing, you know. And yeah, and then as, as Jane said, like we've just finished our, our second season. It's been it's been awesome looking looking back at it, and also looking back at how sometimes I'm still doing stuff, but really not wanting to do some of it. But you go along with it because you're only there once, and you. Sometimes you after you've done it, you think that was that was bloody awesome doing that. That was fantastic. Inside you is brought to you by Factor Meals. Listen, do not fast forward. This is something that you are going to love. I promise you, I love it. It makes my life so much easier. It's Factor Meals. Cook your meals in like two minutes, and they are so delicious. I had this chicken with this mashed potato, cauliflower, and uh, green beans, and I was like, wow, I don't. Even like it, it, it tastes so good, and you can get whatever you want. They have so many items at Factor, and you're not spending a fortune getting delivery. You're not spending a fortune or wasting food in the refrigerator when you go grocery shopping. I love these guys. Factor is like America's number one ready to eat meal kit, and um, there's a reason for it. It can help you fuel up fast with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. Adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 34-plus weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals ready to eat in two minutes. Too busy running around during the day to think about lunch? Keep your energy up with Lunch To Go. Effortless, wholesome meals like grain bowls, salad toppers that are ready to eat when you're on the go. No microwave required. Looking for calorie-conscious options during the busy season? Try delicious, dietitian-approved, calorie-smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. Need an extra boost to help support your wellness goals and feel your best as you tackle a busy autumn? Try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. And they've got all sorts of stuff, Ryan. Assortment of 45-plus add-ons, breakfast items like delicious apple cinnamon pancakes, bacon and cheddar egg bites, uh, potato bacon and egg breakfast skillet, or an easy wellness boost. Try refreshing beverage options like cold-pressed juices, shakes, smoothies. This September, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavored-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash inside50 and use code inside50 to get 50% off. Head to factormeals.com slash inside50 and use code inside50 to get 50% off. That's code inside50 at factormeals.com slash inside50 to get 50% off. Inside of You is brought to you by Prize Picks. This is a new sponsor, and they gave me uh, an account. Well, I had to sign up for an account, which was easy as hell. And I was able to do a little fun betting on things Hmm. and what's great is it's it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports it's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players including pros and sharks you either pick more than or less than on like two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in and i did it and i was like am i gonna know how to do this it was like oh so last night there was a Atlanta versus the Dodgers and Strider was pitching. And I said, oh, he'll have more than uh, five strikeouts. And then another player and you go, oh, and he'll have less than five strike. And I won. I won 40 bucks. Huh. It was that easy. So, you know, it's it's so much fun. And if you're not getting into these fantasy things that everyone does, and I'm kind of not really that knowledgeable on that stuff. This is fun. It's easy. It's on your own time. You could really win some money and you don't even have to bet that much. 
Prize picks is certainly the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You select two or more players, pick more or less than on projected stats, and place your entry. That is it. Prize picks is really simple to play. I could pick my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds, Ryan. Yeah, you can test your skills and you could turn $10 into $250 like that. Players can choose from a vast selection of sports and stat types not offered anywhere else. They can even pick in-game projections after a game has started, which includes halves, quarters, periods, and more. Guys, this is fun. It's so easy for prize picks to just get the app, get on board. You put a little money in your account, and even if it's 5 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, and then you see what happens. You might want to watch a game now to see if someone – it makes things more exciting. It really does. And for me, I'm not a big better. Um, I have friends that are. You can either be a big better or someone like me who just does it kind of randomly and for fun to see what happens. Prize Picks is currently operational over 30 states and Canada, not Ontario. Prize Picks is the best way to have action on the game in states like California, Florida, Texas, Georgia, and over 70% of the U.S. Uh, it's just a blast. I know you're going to try this because like me, you want to kind of win a few bucks here and there, don't you? Okay, this is it. This is how you do it, folks. You want to have some fun? You want to bet a little? You want to make a little money? Easy? None of this complicated fantasy football stuff? This is the way to do it. Go to prizepicks.com slash inside. Use the code inside for a first deposit match up to $100. You must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details prizepicks.com slash inside use code inside for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars prize picks you know what's funny is i can't like i didn't think that was going to be the story i didn't know that you guys kind of came up with this idea i i felt like it was something that someone had to force you come on it'll be fun it'll be this it'll be that and james is like oh, i don't know i don't want to do this and like but you guys really were the ones who were spearheading this thing right yeah it's well it was like it was, it was all oliver's brainchild i just happened to be in the right place at the right time to get the the gig as well um but it was it was yeah it's one of those things where we we kind of we knew what the con like the concept that we wanted, and we were very lucky to to work with guys that had the same vision. And I we've met a couple of of um, people on the way who have kind of said the same thing that you know go and follow if if you have an idea on a project, back yourself and do it. And it's it's not like we've put anything, um, you know, we're not jeopardizing our livelihoods in doing it. But it's generally like we believe in the project, and and we're very lucky that it's it's gone down really well um, around the world. Actually, I've so my gym I go to here is um, it's owned by a load of Polish guys, and it's quite a. I don't really fit in, shall we say? I'm six foot three, about well, I'm eighty eight kilos. So I don't know what that is in pounds. Like hundred. I just know that that's a lot of coke. Um, a bit a bit leaner, shall we say? Um, and and the guys in there aren't they're they're very big anyway this guy waddles over to me one day and he said i i was back like a shadow appeared across me as i was in there and he said um I, I was back in poland at the weekend visiting my family and my niece said you're gonna have to see this program it's about these two english guys that travel and the show's on hbo max in in poland and then he said all of a sudden i see you and i he's at my gym <laughs> and my niece wouldn't believe me so i had to have a photo with this like guy whose his name is literally tank as well so, <laughs> so it, was, like, it was it was very bizarre like i didn't think that that kind of but he, he even he said like it, it's not something that he thought he would enjoy watching but he genuinely enjoyed it as a, a family show as well now be honest with me are, are there times when you guys and be honest where you're just like oh my god i'm so tired of him I, would you shut up? I don't want to hear him. And you're just smiling on camera going, because you're brothers and you're like, you, you, you do so much together. Isn't there those moments where you're like, oh my God, shut up, James. Oh yeah, it happened. <laughs> yeah, I think when it, it was happened, regardless who you travel with. Oh yeah. Like, you know, if you're, especially when you're away, like on this last season we did, um, you know, we did the best part of like six to seven, seven weeks, I think it was straight. Um, so there's times when you kind of just like, all right, and I'm sure people, do, a lot of people on the crew do it with me as well. They're like, oh, here goes again. But you know, for the 
you kind of just you kind of do it with anyone. I think everyone's been away with somebody related or not, and you kind of just like, okay, all right. But then you you kind of see I've always always looked at like the the bigger picture, the bigger goal as it were, you know. We're not after a a um a Nolan Liam Gallagher effect on camera, you know, where we're just like <laughs> calling each other out and everything like that. Um right. so yeah, so we so you do you do kind of you you are I'd say semi-conscious of that while, while filming, but at the same time, the audience don't want to see that. They want to see people enjoying themselves. See, hang on, you- hang on. I don't know if that's look. You don't want it to become some kind of like you know norm. What's his name? Well, that's it. Gal- Gal- well, that's it. You don't. I, I I think the trouble is that you don't want it to be too or come. I did. We never want it. We don't want the show to ever come across as too stage TV. Yes, you know what I mean? yes. Like those type of programs where there's like, oh, there's some random drama going on or something like that. Right, but but what's fun? Of them on the TV. But what's fun, I think, is like seeing you know, like you know, James says some snide remark and goes, yeah, yeah, but you know, he goes, oh, somebody needs a nap, you know, like a little thing like that. Just um, you know, keep those little nuggets to give a little bit. Like, all right, they get annoyed with each other every once in a while. Everything's not perfect. There's a there's a few of those nuggets in there around. They're hidden, but they're in there. They're in there, which is, which again, he's like, it's, it's, it's keep it, it's keep it natural, you know, that we didn't want it to be. I always remember years ago when we first were looking to get the show made and we met with this one production company and they were like, hey, wouldn't it be so funny if like you lost your luggage? Like, no, no, it wouldn't. <laughs> you know? No. But almost like trying to, trying to, trying to script it a bit. And the good thing is that with the show, we, we've we more think how, how crap would that be as a travel show? Cause it would just be you calling one of the airlines saying it's all right my call's very important to them but my suitcase is currently in miami and we're in uh, and you end up just looking right like assholes no matter why look like oh God, exactly you know. yeah, exactly. yeah. You, you throw out yeah what do you mean you better give me 20 dollars last me three days to get, get by but well it's look it's really an enjoyable show and you guys are very charming obviously um you're only in your third season what guests just name a few guests that you've had on on the show so people can go back and watch those so in the first season, we, so we've, we've again work because we're exec producers on it. We can kind of uh, we can have a, a good saying who's on and who's not as well. And we want people on that you're going to get on with first and foremost because it no matter how much how how much acting comes into it, you can't replicate a good rep, a good relationship with people on on camera, right? Yeah. So um, we're lucky that we've got a load of our our old Potter mates involved and other acting friends of ours. Who's joined in? So in the first season, we had Haley Joel Osmond. Um, he came to Austria with us. He's actually an amazing snowboarder as well. Wow. That's what uh, we learned that on that one. Um, and then there was Bonnie Wright, who played our sister, Ginny in the movie, uh, Ivana Lynch. Um, Nat Tenner's come with us on the this season. I went wow. to Turkey, which was pretty epic. Um, yeah, so we, we've had some pretty cool, pretty cool guys, guys and girls come and join us, and it's you know, if we do season three, obviously you're going to be the highlight. Oh yeah, of the whole show. Oh, yeah. so. And uh, mate, what's where her name we, from uh, Arya St- Arya Stark? You had her on. Oh, sorry, yeah, Maisie, Maisie Williams, Williams yeah. as well. Yeah. Did you have Matt Lewis on too already? Yeah, so yeah, Matt Matt's came on season us. two with us. Yeah, Neville we Longbottom. In, um, we yeah. were down. Uh, there's there's quite a story to that actually. So Matt, um, in his wisdom, the day before we started filming, um, tweeted where he was. And said, "Can is anyone here know where I can watch the Leeds United match?" Oh my god! And we and so James and I just travelled from England, and to get to where we were was the best part of over thirty hours, thirty-two hours, I think it took. It was thirty-six yeah, hours from door to door. So you get you get into this hotel lobby, and there's a there, there's people there like wanting to say hello and, and everything like that. Fucking oh, Lewis, you, doing, you know. We, Really nice, yeah. And then we get to the pub, to watch right? Leeds and as well. Who the hell wants to watch Leeds? Leeds gets gets like yeah, Leeds. But anyway, so we're watching we're watching that, and he was just like, um, "I'm so sorry, mate. I'm so sorry." <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Leeds. You can't put Leeds down. Didn't you get your audition for Harry Potter and Leeds? We did. I know. Uh, I'm no, about the football no. team, not the city. The city's beautiful. <laughs> good, good, uh, good That's response. <laughs> Inside of you is brought to you by Better Help. BetterHelp Online Therapy. How are you guys not doing this? This is, with with the world the way it is, um, the stigma, there's not stigma on therapy anymore. Everyone's talking about mental health and life, and this is good. And this means that you deserve uh, therapy uh, for your life. 
uh, in your life. Uh, it should be a part of everyone's life, if you ask me. It's helped me substantially. And, uh, you know, you could talk about so many things. And if you don't, they get bottled up. And unfortunately, when they get bottled up, things start to manifest and they become some other things. And, uh, you know, if you just keep talking to someone as a professional, not me, but talking to a professional, you'll see the benefits quickly. Um, anxious thoughts, you know, sometimes they, they don't seem like they're going to go away. And uh, when you're trying to go to sleep, your mind's racing. When you're on a date, you're anxious. There's all these things. But talking through them with a licensed therapist through BetterHelp really will help you. Ryan, you, you still work with BetterHelp. I do. And it's been good. It has been good for me. Yeah, I've noticed. You've got, you're calmer. I always feel better coming out of it. I mean, I had one yesterday, and I usually uh, supports me through, you know, the next until the next time I talk. Yeah, you, and you always feel like you have nothing to talk about it, and by the end, you're like, oh, I can keep talking. Always, every always, time. every time. Therapy and BetterHelp give me a place to get out of my negative thought cycles, so I can find some mental and emotional peace. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's all done online. Just fill out a questionnaire, which takes you a minute, and get matched with a licensed professional, a therapist. But you can change them if you don't like them um, at no additional charge. It's so easy. It's convenient. It's flexible. It's It works to your schedule, folks. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash inside today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash inside. This message is sponsored by Discover. Did you know you could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails with online privacy protection? The latest innovation from Discover. Discover will help regularly remove your personal info, like your name and address, from 10 popular people search websites that could sell your data. And they'll do it for free. Activate in the Discover app. See terms and learn more at discover.com slash online privacy protection. Do you, do you remember, was it your idea or, I mean, how old were you and whose idea was it to, for you guys to audition for this? We were, we were 14 when we first auditioned and we, we learned about it because my mum's friend got in touch with her and just said, you know what, they're, they're doing uh, open auditions for the Potter movies. Maybe, maybe Oliver and James could, could go along, you know? So we, we went we thought, yeah, sure, why not? It's on a Thursday, so it's like we miss school. We get possibly to be in an amazing, in you know a film, and one experience. So we and what we got to Leeds. So we we went up to Leeds, which is about about two and a half hours from where we grew up. And at this hotel, uh, they were auditioning for every role, so it was just like bedlam. You know, there were thousands of people there, like going for all roles. It's like you know. Kids with lipstick lightning tat uh, lightning marks on their forehead. They really pushy show parents. You must see my daughter. You must see my son. And we're just there, like we turn up. We suddenly really, so you get like a a, um, a raffle ticket. Obviously, it's when you're raffle when your numbers called, you go to the go to do the audition. And then we stood there, and after about twenty minutes or so, I suddenly realised that we all realised that we were the only set of identical twins who weren't wearing the same clothes, which. In hindsight, you think, yeah, you need to look the same. You go dress the same. But this is how green we were to be the whole process. So we we darted across to the um, to the department store over the road and then bought just matching shirts. First matching shirts we saw, we were just like, right, just get those and wear it in. And yeah, and then we we eventually got seen probably about three hours later or so, I'd say. Um, said our one line, which was it was one of Harry's lines. I forget the exact line. And then, yeah, literally did that. And then they were like, right, okay, off you go. Thank you very much. A couple of days later, we got a, a phone call um, saying, yeah, we'd, we'd love to see the guys at the main studio just outside of London. And we fax you the, the size. This is even before email. How long ago this is? Before email was readily available to everyone. So they, they would fax us the, uh, the size. And then, yeah, that happened about three or four times after that where we were after we met um chris Plum, the director david Heyman, who produced it and uh, and a couple of the other like casting um people and then we had a we were then we went away on our family vacation which was to fulfill crete one of the greek islands and for two weeks we were like 
okay. And just first before we flew out, they said, oh, yeah, we, we really like to see the guys when they get back. And we're suddenly like, right, okay. So we know that gingers don't tan. <laughs> so we were, you know, factor 100, living under an umbrella the whole time, trying to <laughs> stay out of the, stay, stay out of getting any color. Um, and then we went back, landed. And then the next day we went to our um, screen test, which was like on a on a set like everyone, everyone most, most, most people do, you know, you did a screen test in front of see what the chemistry's like on camera. And then, yeah, but I think the next day or the day after, they, um, Jan Hurtison, who's the head casting director, called my our house and mum answered it and she said hi is that uh is that the mum of fred and george weasley and then that was it so it was a whirlwind probably six weeks in total i'd say but mad mad life-changing event i mean did you guys even want to act when you first started were you acting no <laughs> for sure <laughs> well, no I, I did want to act but it, we won it, it wasn't uh, no one from our town did. Like it wasn't a, a thing which, which you ever. I never saw it as a, a viable option of, of a career. And so much so the the drama teacher at our school said, "Don't take drama for your essentially high school <laughs> level because you won't have a career in it." Um, wow. So I had great delight going back to him after that summer and be like, "Well, you know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> How about this?" And I, I actually, I actually told that story when we we did. Um, one of the theme park rides were being open at Universal in Florida. And I told that story. And a couple of weeks later, I had a tweet from a, a kid who went to my, who goes to my former school and said, this video has now been banned from being shown in class because everybody keeps playing it when said teacher was like giving his advice on a, <laughs> a situation. And they're like, well, you don't know anything like this. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, excellent <laughs> oh my god that's it's just insane i mean when you're when you're doing this audition you're like hey the first one you're like all right all right but when you got that next call back did you start to like every day you were obsessed with it thinking about it and it get, kept going and going you couldn't stop thinking about it it was weird I yeah. in my head I mean, in my head i kind of already assumed well we've got this in my head I, I, at that age i'd suddenly gone like yeah we've got this and then i remember it wasn't long after the Truman Show movie had come out. And I had this weird, like, maybe this is just like a whole thing, you know? <laughs> and it was like, it, everything's rolling too perfectly. Um, and then, yeah, I just I just always assumed that we were going to be Fred and George in the film. It was a bizarre confidence that I'd never had before. James, did you feel that? Kind of, but to be honest, I, I, mean, I, I had nothing to compare it with. It was... It's one of those where it, it felt like it felt right. You can imagine. I mean, I guess it just came a natural thing where you imagine yourself in the role when you're doing the audition. That's good for the audition. But um, yeah, with like you're saying, with every other audition, because there was like five or six of them in total, it gets more real and it get, and you know that you must be doing something right actually further down the line. And I've never been more nervous in all my life than when we were in that um, screen test. Because the, it's, it's touching distance at that point. I mean, you've, you've been there many times, so you, you know you, you know that it's it's reachable. That's what scares you so, when you're thinking about it. Like you're like, oh my god, this is real. This is real. How do I stay? I mean, and you're 14. How you don't know how to keep it together. You don't know how to act cool. You don't. And I think that's probably the charm that maybe you guys have. So, yeah. You know, I think so. I mean, the one the one thing I did remember from the screen test is because obviously our hair isn't the Weasley ginger that we ended up having weren't filming and they try they were trying a uh, a temporary hair dye and i remember they put it on and i thought this looks just like you know i've got slightly lighter brown hair but <laughs> this isn't gonna work maybe we don't look as they thought and then so but you kind of like push that to the back of your head i suppose when doing it but it was just i remember when they when we got the uh got got the role i can't even remember if they must have mentioned it but i can't even remember them mentioning that they were going to dye our hair I just remember just, it was like an unsaid thing of, all right, yeah, we'll do it. Wow. Wait, no, we'll I, I, well, I remember them saying, I remember, uh, I think it was Chris Columbus saying to us, are you guys are okay with your hair being dyed, right? I was like, you can shave my head for all I care. Like, I don't, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what that's like, though. Yeah, you know, I know what that's like. <laughs> exactly. My God. I mean, did you read the books or, uh, obviously you read the books after for sure, or the book. I don't know how many books were out there. I'm not a big reader. But, uh, you know, did you ever, were you like, wait a minute, 
we're in the books. You guys are there throughout the books, right? So yeah, you're like so the, the yeah. The, so the first audition happened, and the fourth book had just come out, and it was the first like publicized midnight midnight launch of a book in however long. Because obviously the books were they got. I always say they they got a new generation reading around the world, which is so that's why they were, the film was going to be a, a big thing. Um, and we'd read the first book, so we knew the characters from the first book. But then I started reading the second and the third book over that summer. And the third book, so I was reading The Prisoner of Azkaban, which I think is my favourite book out of, the se- out of the series. And you know the smell that a book has, right? Um, that smell, no matter what book I'm reading now, reminds me of reading The Prisoner of Azkaban in the summer of 2000 when we were cast in the roles. Uh, it's just just little things like that, yeah. Wow. That so I mean you you knew like hey, unless we get fired, we're gonna be in a lot of these movies. This is or did you kind of uh, think you were just we kind of knew yeah, we kinda kinda knew they were gonna do two films initially. And then yeah, and then it kind of just rolled and then there was always talk or maybe they'll do a third and then they'll maybe do a fourth, and then if that goes well. Because really at that time I think Potter is still, I might be wrong. I mean, obviously you've got like, the Marvel Universe, but that's a totally different genre of film type thing. Um, I think it was the first time so that I can remember that you had eight movies which have stayed and then, if anything, grown in popularity. Normally it, it starts, then maybe the second one, maybe. Yeah, really they get and progressively then, worse usually. Yeah, so so this was, this was something that I remember where it had never happened. You know, and certainly where there's still the buzz and it gets louder and louder. And you, it was, I, it was always funny though, because like, I mean, when the films would come out, I would get recognized. Regardless, like where I was, I get recognized. And then gradually it would slow down. So I was like, okay, cool. And then for some reason, when the last book, the last film came out, it's continued ever, it's continued ever since. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's an amazing thing that there's, there's still kids to this day who weren't even born when the last film came out, yet they know every word in the film. Isn't that something? And know everything about it. It's such a special thing. I mean, it's the gift that keeps on giving. You you do something like that, and that is just like, you can't beat that. You can't beat the Harry B- Potter you know, world. I mean, to me, it's like, it's like being in the Star Wars, the original Star Wars world or something like that. It's, it's probably, yeah, it's, it's at least that it's just, it's remarkable. And I always thought, you know, I, when I saw Harry Potter, I always thought, is this what England's really like? Is this, I, you know, I kind of wish yes, it was, it <laughs> you know, I guess there, there's some place with the cobblestone and the little buildings and things, but was it kind of like when this, the books came out, was it sort of like the Willy Wonka the, from the original Willy Wonka? Wonka's releasing new balls. He's opening up his yeah. gates. <laughs> you know, that <laughs> shit was a kind of chaotic and crazy and the books wouldn't stay on the shelves. I think it was, I, I think it was like the world, right? What, worldwide for, uh, for the books. Um, I know that in the States it was a big thing about the, the midnight launches as well and all that kind of stuff. So it was always a thing then when we caught when we were filming obviously and the new book would come out we'd want to know what was going to happen with our characters so that was always a quick one of who could read it the the fastest or or just get the audio book like some of us did and listen to it on the way into <laughs> yeah. work and when you're waiting around so um you kind of knew what was happening with the character and what the their journey was going to be and that kind of stuff what was who was the one person you were in awe of or were you too young to really be starstruck was it was it Richard oh, Harris? Yeah, there was quite a few. Was it? There was there was quite a few. I remember the main, the first person who I was suddenly like like wide eyed like wow, um, and that was we were at the read through, and we sat down and uh, sitting next to me was Rick Mail, who was cast to play Peeves, and unfortunately he didn't, the, the character didn't make it into the films. But growing up, like uh, Rick Mail was just like to me a comedy god in terms of acting style, like very over the top, very in your face humor, slapstick, you know, lots of other stuff. And he, I remember I was just like, he made a little, hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Rick, you know, 
and then he went to write um he wrote in a, a book of mine um and he's like oliver the best actor i've ever crossed it out worked with <laughs> best wishes by the time thing. and <laughs> You know, it was just apps. It was just a real icebreaker, and we did the there's a there's a line where we have to say, um, uh, "Honest woman, you call yourself our mother," uh, and you're supposed to be like you're supposed to get a laugh. And he was exactly as I thought he would be, like watching on the TV. Everyone was like, huh, apart from Rick, who was like, <laughs> really <laughs> over the top, which to me was great. Because yeah, it put me totally at ease. You know, you've already got somebody championing your your humour, which is great. What about you, Jim? Uh, I mean, to be honest, there's there's too many to say because it was literally like a who's who of of British acting throughout the whole season. I bet your series. parents were probably more starstruck than you guys were at times. They definitely knew more of obviously more of the more of the character, like more of the actors. Because um, we knew, so like Maggie Smith, for example, we knew her more from Sister Act. Than, <laughs> oh, wow! Do you know what I mean? So and she and she would actually say that to us as well uh, at the time, but yeah, she was incredible because I always think that I learn obviously you 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 learn like you pick up obviously of what the what others around you, especially more established actors are doing around you. But I always remember how they were behaving off camera, mm. and there's a reason why all these people have been working for so long and they're so respected because they treat everyone else with respect. Wow. And there was no devery moments that you could see. Like they would, they would always be there on time if they needed. They'll go, they'll sit, they'll wait, they'll go in and do their thing. And some of the some of the uh, stories as well, which Michael Gambon would tell, he was he's one of the funniest men I've ever met. And if you ever want to get stuck in the elevator with anyone, he's probably the person because he's got so many good stories. And there was one well, I've told this story before, but there was. Um, on the sixth film, I was an AD. So I always wanted to work on the crew. And so you asked for that. For, you said, I want to work on the set. Yeah. And they were yeah, like, right, you yeah. can do this, right? You're not going to, you're going to work hard. You're going to, they had, you had to really yeah, convince well, them. I think they knew, they kind of knew that, um, you know, my work ethic was there and all that kind of stuff. And I'd, I'd done a few days on different jobs with the crew before. All right. But I was contracted for the whole picture, but I was only going to be needed for about uh, two weeks or something out of nine months so i saw so I, I just uh, spoke to my agent and i was like right i'm i'm gonna ask them to do this instead instead of like getting me well-paid work i'd rather do <laughs> i'd rather go and do this and so i i went there and i was a key set pa and so that's my i actually got my credit on the film so that's probably my my favorite credit anyway <laughs> wow guess. that's cool we were we were filming um, the scene when Dumbledore is up the clock tower without giving too much away. It's a very um, important part of the whole story of the of the series. And in between takes, Michael was was outside um, having a cigarette, and I was just with him, looking after him, as it were, make sure he didn't run off. And he was he said to me, "So what are you doing at the weekend?" And I said, "Well, actually, Oliver and myself we're reading Peter and the Wolf with the Halle Orchestra in Manchester." Um, but I've never read with an orchestra before, so I'm not sure how to, you know, how do you speak in time with the music and all that kind of stuff. And without batting an eyelid, Michael was like, "Oh, I've I've done that before, that kind of stuff." You got the script with you? I was like, "Yes." So he literally sat down with me and went through. Well, this is where the music's going to come in. Pencil that. Do this. So I've literally got dumb, and he's dressed as Dumbledore, telling me all this as well. So he's wow. he's talking me through it. So I've got this absolute legend just. And he, I mean, he's, you'd think in, he's in full right to be preparing for the scene that he's about to shoot, but he was all about, you know, giving me that time to do that. And um, it's it's one of those where I've, I've never forgot that. And I, I always think that there's a, like I said, there's a reason why good actors work so many times. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just so, you look a lot at a lot of the great actors and there's look, there's some real assholes out there. There's some monsters. Yeah, you hear true. the stories, but for the most part, yeah. the big ones are usually the nice ones that have been around a while. They get it They're You know, uh, you know, they have nothing to prove. There's this <clears> sort of like, let that go. And it's like, Hey, let's pay it forward. And uh, I mean, I got to ask about Alan Rickman because you know, he was just legendary, but he seems to me from what I've gathered and talked to people, he was a kind man on set, 
but he was also, you know, if if anyone you would fear a little bit or be nervous around, some some of the guys or gals would say Rickman was a little intimidating, but he wasn't a jerk or anything. Was did it, did you just feel that presence like hello? What is it? Tell me. I think a little bit. I think it's obviously he was in he a lot of the time when we were in close proximity to him. Obviously he was in Snape's full full getup, which carries its own oh you know presence about it. But no, I mean I'm I, I mean I always remember he. Um, he came back from a, an awards, the Oscars or somewhere, and he got an iPod, and it was one of the first iPod nanos or something like that. And he was like, "I've got this iPod," and we we're in there and making. He's like, "How do you how do you make this thing work?" And again, like so he's like in full Snape outfit. We're dressed as like Fred and George in their school outfit, <laughs> and we're there we're there putting music on this iPod. Um, but that was that was the type of person he he was. I'd say like there wasn't a Oh, these guys are young. Don't need to talk to them. There wasn't any of that going on, and there was other stuff which it's not my story to tell. But I've I've, saw, I've seen him uh, when we were filming. Uh, really help one of the um, there was a girl who was doing a um, she was a, yeah she was a double and she was doing a project for her school and she was looking for someone to voice it and he helped her out with that. Or, or there was there was something like that. I forget the exact the exact um, details, but stuff where you were like that's class. That's a classy job. That's cool. That is cool. Um, do you guys still want to do a lot of acting or what, like, you, look, you have families now you got, you know, you're taking care of people, <laughs> the little people and, you know, <laughs> you know, you're traveling and doing this show. I mean, do you like to be as busy as possible or do you sort of like the lulls where I could just be with the family? I could just be with the kids. Then I can go work. Um, or are you always looking for new new things to do and always uh, needing to keep busy? Is that important to you? For me, I, well, for me, I, I'm I don't know if you're the same. When when I go away, I kind of flick a switch, and it's like I can't think about home because obviously I miss the family and uh, I miss walking the dog and all that kind of stuff in the morning. So I, I kind of flick a switch, and I'm just like blinkers on what I'm doing when I'm away, and I'll check in once a day with what's going on so when i'm but when i'm home i'm home um but i do i do love to work i love the whether it's scripted stuff whether it's the semi like the um document that documentary stuff or anything like that as well like i i, I really enjoy the process um so i guess i i'm i'm happy with both i'm am I, i'm in a fortunate position as well where i'm not needing to go and work every day um, which is a very, I know I'm very, very lucky to yeah, be in that position. Humbling. So, which definitely helps. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm always, a, and I'm, I've got a very supporting family. My wife's amazing that she's, she, she knows what the job entails. Like I was, I was like this when she found me and, um, <laughs> yeah. she, and, and she, she's cool. It's very supportive. So, so yeah, I'm, I love working, but I also love chilling out as well. So it's, I'm, I'm very lucky in that regard. Ali, you just say the same. I'd say, yeah, I'd say the same. I mean, it's one of those things like you're always looking to do stuff. I think that's the the healthy way to look at it. Always be open for things, and and when stuff does appear, if it's if it's workable, then definitely I'd rather do it than find an excuse not to do something. Obviously, there's some things you get, and you're like, oh, that no. it's rubbish. But on the whole, on on the whole, you're going to just be going for it. I mean, there was well, there was one like where you, uh, I remember getting this this offer through, and it was. The pay was bad. The script was even worse, <laughs> and it was like, nah, nah, I'm, I'm all right, you know. I can, I can pass this one by. But as James said, that's only because we're very lucky because there's a, there's a great fandom from Potter which has been able to help us. Yeah, that's sustain, awesome. Sustain that that thing, you know, and 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 pursue stuff like like the travel show, like the podcast, and, and things where we can really help help ourselves to stuff but also as jane said still being open to, to doing other projects be it together or be it separately i think that's really yeah did i either of you guys ever deal with any kind of anxiety or depression or were you guys pretty much even killed was it you know was it a pretty good upbringing was uh you know what was that like and and, and how did you deal with it if if you did so yeah i, I mean i to be honest with you there you go no i got you <laughs> I was, i'm i'm <laughs> i'm 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 very i'm very lucky i'm I'm a very, um, I was just thinking actually, the, your last question, when I'm home, I'm still very busy. 
so it's not like I sit around and get bored like I I've I'm always out I'm not pretty much always outdoors um either paddle boarding or golfing or hiking or walking or cycling any or actually doing the London Marathon this coming weekend Gosh. as we record this so I'm, I'm exhausted I'm even that hearing well. that oh, jeez yeah. have you done a marathon no oh no we had a marathon gas station that I used to stop at <laughs> 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 but what about like, but what about like, you know, you say you're busy and you're doing all these things. It sounds like this is what you have to do. It's in your blood. Like I have to do this. And that keeps you sane. I think so. I think that it's because it, I've, I've never done, I was, I was speaking to my friend about it the other day, actually, like I've never done therapy or anything like that. And I think it's because I, I don't feel like I've, I've needed to, because that, that is my thing. Like I can, I guess a form of meditation for me is, I'm literally out on the water with my dog and we're just paddle boarding and it's just like, that's, that's, it could be that's really therapy. rough, choppy waves. It could be it still as a, a pond. Like it's, it's, I'm, I'm just happy to be in that moment. And even when I'm traveling my, uh, I was, I was taught this exercise years ago where I'll find somewhere out outdoors it could be in the middle of the city. It could be in the middle of a forest and I'll just sit down, close my eyes and listen for five minutes to what I can hear. And then you, you obviously the more you listen, the more you can hear. Then you open your eyes and try and picture, put pictures to the sounds. And wherever I do that, I always feel like my batches are recharged and I'm good to go with whatever any anxiety I've got seems to have melted away in doing that. Wow, and I pretty much I, do that every every day. I like that. I'm gonna start doing that. Is it okay if you go in your backyard right near where my dog poops and just sit there and does it have a chair? Yeah. No, maybe I should be somewhere else away from your home. No, somewhere. no, no. It, well, it, it literally works every because even if it's your own garden, you'll hear similar sounds or completely new ones. And then it may be a new sound. You'll be like, what the hell's that? I like that. Ollie? Yeah. I mean, I'd say, I'd say the opposite, to be honest with you, in terms of what I've, I've gone through it quite, quite a lot over the last probably, um, what, seven years, maybe like bad. Um, I think it kind of triggered with that. Uh, when I mentioned that um, car crash I mentioned earlier, that was kind of like a trigger to, to like a bull rolling, I suppose, on on the mental health side of things. And then probably about a couple of months later, I've never actually spoken about this uh, in depth, but um, yeah, and then it, it gradually got more and more. I, uh, our daughter had been born and I, I was worried about the man I was going to be in terms of a father and stuff build all that in your head like at times I'll be going to put it to bed and I'll be like I'm I'm gonna be a bad dad probably I can't do do you know what I mean I can't provide for her maybe the way she needs to or whatever like that and you you start down yourself with that then you have other things and it, it all came to a head where I was I was literally driving home one night uh from London um on a motorway and I was just like aimed at the end of the road and just like let's go and call it I'm religious, so to me it felt like God literally bitch slapped me and said, "Get them home," and and I did. And I literally just I can't I can't, I can't even remember the drive home. All I remember it going really really dark really quickly. Um, but I got I got back and um, checked myself into into a, a therapy unit the next day, and that started to address it, which was and it's still and the ironic thing it was on World Mental Health Day. That was a really ironic wow. thing. So I was like, I got, I, I got home and I was googling, like, you know, um, I was googling, uh, you know, mental health, and all the topics were World Mental Health Day. And I was like, what's that mean? Uh, you know, and then anyway, um, and then gradually started to sort, sort some stuff out. And then it's been a long process, and it's not, it's not by any means like it gets done. Yeah, and you can have people say all the time. Oh, he's good to talk, you know, find someone, talk to someone, you know. And that's easy said to them, but the best way I'd describe it is, and if anyone's listening to this and they understand what I'm talking about, it's you're you're aware that many people go through it, but to you it feels like you're the only one who is. And it's, I know. it's finding that, you know, and it's finding that it's finding that that way to, to reach out. I mean, but even even as even as recently as last week, I was I was in a really dark spot last week, you know, um, through through some things that have gone on. And it's how you how you deal with it. I mean, my my, my wife is is brilliant. She's been brilliant with me and really supportive. And I've I've started seeing a um, actually a psychiatrist now. So 
So you, there's different, obviously, different ways of yep. treating mental health. I have one. You could have a counsellor, you could have a therapist, you could have a, a, a psychiatrist, and it's just different different tools to deal with stuff and how to how to get back to yourself and how to. I always want to make sure that I leave the world in a much better place than I came into it. And if that if if that's me helping people do stuff in terms of okay, well he's he's done that. He always comes across a really positive, outgoing guy. Yeah. And to the most time I am, but then, you know, everyone wears a mask, you know, to stop themselves from doing doing stuff. And and sometimes maybe that's where the 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 comic comes out, shall we say. Yeah. Because nothing hides fear more nothing hides fear or tears more than a laugh. Um, so you, you you know, you, you 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 do that and then you you kind of have to have to live with it. And there's there's ways of doing it. But like I say, there was a time last as recently as last week when it just didn't feel like I I was I thought if I cry now I'm not gonna stop. And it's it's just one of these things you just have to first of all acknowledge it. I think that's the most important thing is to acknowledge it. See it not that it's a weakness, see that it's not something that is it'll be all right. Pull yourself together. Um and also the amount of mates who I who I've spoken to about it recently or or many weeks, months, years gone by, and they'll say, Yeah, I know, mate. Or or even worse, they'll say to me, You could have told me, you really could have told me, and then they get really pissy that I didn't think about mentioning it. But then it goes back to what I said is that you feel that like you can't. You feel like well, they wouldn't want to hear it. But I mean, like even uh like last week, um, Oh, sorry, yesterday, last night, I went and met up with one of my oldest friends. And we've known each other for years and years. Like, you know, he was, I was best man at his wedding. I'm um, godfather to, his, to, to two of his kids. And he's, he's, he's having a chat about some stuff that he's going through. And we just went, went, I went to his house. He lives near the countryside. Um, and we just went for a walk for about four hours. And it is cold here at night at the moment. But you just, you know, we st- we found a tiny little country pub. We went in, had a pint, went on another walk, and just put the world, I wouldn't even say put put the world to right. We just spoke about stuff which is going on. And it's, it's really true what they say, you know, a, a problem shared is a problem half. But then you also get, the thing where I, he, he said something to me, and I went, oh, yeah, I've done, I know exactly, I've done the exact same thing, which you, he said, I was like, really? Because sometimes you, who are you holding yourself? Um, I always think, who are you holding yourself at the level at? You know, we've uh, my daughter and I have got a saying, which is, "Be your best." And she's added in, and forget the rest. So it's that <laughs> it's that thing where because the end of the day, start with being the best version of you, and then worry about what other other people are doing. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm so glad you opened up about that because it's like you know. All, so many people listen and they, you know, you guys opening up or, you know, what helps you, James? And then Oliver, I, which I was surprised. I, I thought it'd be James that well, had you- the depression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is, no. that, is that because I like to, is that because I like to go outside at night with a telescope? And <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, you know, Ollie, to be honest with you, I, I've had those moments where I'm driving in the rain and I remember, well, I was, doing a show and i had to drive over this bridge and just thinking i'm so tired i'm just not i'm not in my right mind and just what am i doing here i just don't know it'd be better if i was gone i i've I've had those thoughts i'd be better i'd be i'm a burden i'm no one understands no one knows what i'm going through they no one you, you, you go with that because it just you you do feel that isolated you do feel that alone and you wonder why it's happening to you. And, and what happens is with me is I would be envious of my friends going out and having fun. And I'm like, gosh, why can't I go out and have fun? Why do I feel yeah, like yeah. this? Why do I, gosh, I wish I was that person. They're just so, they have clarity and they have, you know, but you never know what other people are going through. No, and that's it. And it was, it was funny when you say like the whole they have fun thing. Cause the thing what really got the thing going with me years back and say so this is two twenty seventeen, i think it is maybe so it was a while ago anyway long time ago now um but yeah and i, I remember we went to um 
I was noticing I was going to places and realizing that I wasn't having fun. It was like going through the uh, motions, going through the motions. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So we were, we were, we were went to watch Ajax football team play. And I'd always wanted to go to the, you know, see them, see them play. And we were sat there and we were guests of the club in the Royal Box. We had Henry van der Sar, who is the, um, like an amazing legendary goalkeeper in his own right, but also a, like the director of football, director of the club there, chairman of the club or whatever. He presented us with signed shirts from the team. We met the team. And I remember just sitting there thinking, like, I should be enjoying this. Yeah. And it, you, like, almost you don't let yourself do it. And then going back to when we were in, in the car, um, that came from, we were coming back from playing a golf course, which is like one of these super duper elite golf courses. You need to know someone just to be able to play them. That that side of the place, you know. We and I was driving home thinking, I don't know if I if I'd be able to play there again. I don't know if, I, if they'd want me to play there again. And you just kind of start thinking that, and then other things start going through your head, and to the point where I didn't want to, I didn't want anyone to think that I drove up there intentionally, because I was like, well, then they don't have to worry about, you know, a note or maybe I'm at fault or anything like that. Because you think, well, I'm just better if I'm not around. So it's, it's crazy. That. It's and crazy. Then, how we think. As, as I say, as I say, look, to me, I'm, it honestly felt like I got bitch slapped me <laughs> and like get home. And it was, um, it was the start of, yeah, just, just the start of taking ownership of what, of what you do. For One yourself. step at a time, man. That's what it is. Exactly you that. have to just exactly. take that first say, step. Yeah. And you can go, you can go backwards. You know, yeah. as I said, like as recently as last week, I was in, I went to bed for like, I don't know how long I was in there for, but I just didn't want to get out. And you, you work your way through it. You yeah, work tell it. And you know it's important. Like now that you know those feelings, it's important to tell your wife, like, "Hey, I'm I'm feeling like this. There's nothing you could do, but yeah. you just be there and just know that I'm trying to, you know." Or uh, James, by the way, I'll just ask you really quick, quickly. Did did you know any of this was happening? Was it a complete shock to you when he told you? Uh, I could I could tell certain things, um, but. It, it, it obviously he, he sat my mum and dad and myself down and, and kind of explained what was what's going on and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, were you? Um, but yeah, well, for, I, I guess I'm on the other side of it because I don't go through like I, I I haven't had that that dark cloud over me in in such a way. I at first I found it a bit uh, I couldn't relate to it. Yeah, if that it yeah, which which is is a learning thing as well. It's and obviously like I. I can now. I, I've, I've opened myself. I'm not, that's the wrong. That's the wrong way of putting it. I'm. I'm. Uh, try and put yourself in in all of the situations and 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 thoughts and other people's as well if they're talking like that. Um, because just because it, it never affected me, and there's a lot of. I guess it's like a lot of uh, conditions like that. It's if you've never had it, it's, it's hard to to understand. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100. percent I think it's like you know. Um having a bad example analogy would be like you know i would i had a lot of back surgeries i had a lot of back pain and my friends were like oh sorry to hear that man oh cool cool man are you all right oh good you're feeling better yeah man i'm fine all right yeah yeah and then one day one of my friends comes like crying to me and i'm like uh are you all right They're like dude my back's been so messed up and i just thought of all the years and all the surgeries you had and i i, I had no idea how debilitating this is and people don't know until they feel it they don't mm -hmm. and so all you could do is say i love you i'm here please come to me when you need me anytime and that's it i love you i don't care we'll get through this and it doesn't matter about understanding it's just understanding that it happens to other people and it happens to many people and if it's not happening to you that's thank god but you know yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I remember I was in uh, in Japan once, and we were uh, sorry, no, we we're in South Korea in Seoul. We'd uh, we'd done an event in Japan, and a friend of mine came out, and he he, he we went to to Korea afterwards, and I told him about it. This was a couple of years afterwards, and I said to him about you know I was I'm I'm talking seconds from from crashing away, uh, like over 130 or whatever the car was maxed out at the time. And he said, uh, he's, it's just a very simple thing. He just said, well, I'm really glad. You did. And that is always. He said what? He, he said what? <laughs> he said, I'm really glad that you didn't. 
and it's just a simple thing but yeah it's just you know it's, and, and sometimes they're the things that people feel really supported with more than oh well you know and the worst thing you could do is someone says to you i'm feeling bad is the worst thing you could do is say to them yeah i've done that or 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 come on man look at you you're you're in a franchise yeah. you do these cons people love you you travel you have money you're good looking you're like you're like that's what you don't want to hear it's like i here's the thing my friend said that said this at his wedding he said um most of my life um intellectually i knew people some people loved me i knew that intelligently that they loved me but i never felt it i could never f- feel that mm-hmm. and then he met his wife and i could relate to that because i know so and so loves me i mean, how, I mean uh, we, of course i've known him forever and we've been through they, they have to love me but there's a difference between like yeah i know that and feeling that and so, you know, that's important because sometimes we're just like, you just feel so alone. So anyway, thank you for, for talking about that. That's just like, and by the way, you could always call me, man. Cause I've been. No, nah, cheers, mate. I didn't Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize it was, as it was, when would you tell, when do you mention it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when do you, when do you mention it? Unless it's like that. But like I said, I've never, I don't think I've ever gone into depth with it like that before. So um, yeah, I just want to, I'm sure when people talk about this stuff, it's the normal thing to say, but I want to echo that. It's just that if anyone's listening to this right now, they will. So I remember when we did our, I remember when I did our podcast, someone said, uh, someone dropped me a message saying that they were, um, they were having a, one of the worst days of their life and they just got a laugh out of our podcast. So thanks for helping them out. But if me just hearing that story, just one person listens to that right now and says, I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, I'm feeling a bit like that. I'm getting that way. Talk to someone. Just, Talk to someone, talk to a therapist, anyone, your best mate. Start with that. Amen. Start with your parents. Start with someone. Thanks for sharing. All right, this is it. Phelps Brothers shit talking with the Phelps Brothers. This is rapid fire. This is from my top tier patrons. They ask questions. Patreon.com slash inside of you. I love you guys. You keep the podcast going. Leanne, I have heard many identical twins state that they would switch identities for a bit. Did either one of you do that? What is a common misconception people have about identicals? So rapid fire, go uh, go Ollie first. Rapid fire. Uh yeah, I have um switched identities with James once when I forgot my driving license and so I borrowed his. James? <laughs> There's one which I'll tell you off camera. Oh uh, okay. Reasons. It's not like that. It's not, not like, like that. that. Not like that, you like... sick pervert. <laughs> <laughs> a little switchy switch <laughs> a um, little twitch have we switch? I, i've i've tend to be oliver at a hotel so i could sign all my um expenses back to his room <laughs> i can see that happening a lot all right heather c what was your all-time favorite weasley twin shenanigan over the course of all the movies uh, uh the, the joke shop in the sixth movie that was my favorite uh because the set was amazing and it was all about us, which every actor wants, right? Yeah. All right. Ray H., how do you feel about working on projects together versus projects individually? Um, we've already really talked about that, but rapid fire. Uh, are you guys going to continue working together? You're going to continue doing this series? Uh, you know, uh, you'd like to do things individually and work together. Is that kind of like how you feel? Yeah, I'd say I'd say the second, uh, I think definitely working together is is great. It's a good thing to be able to do, but also working individually is always it was always nice as as your individual self to do that is, is both important as well. You agree, James? Yep, very much so. Marisol, what was your least favorite scene to shoot on Harry Potter? Whether it was hard, it was long, it was boring. Ugh. There would be least favorite scene Quidditch in the third movie because it was it was blue screen or green screen. And these things can take a while anyway because they need to match up with all the other uh, effects that are going on. But it was set in the rain, so we were soaking wet. You had a giant like fan blowing at you what made you look like you're flying, so that was cold. Um, yeah, that's. I still get shudders when I think about it, both physically and metaphorically. James? Uh, least favourite probably would be the... 
Uh, sixth movie when the Weasley house is on fire because that was night shoots for about two weeks and it was cold and wet and all those kind of fun things which no one realizes goes on when you're filming. Guys, this was awesome. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's late in uh, England. It's like probably 10 10 p.m. I know you're going to get ready it's, for bed. It's, you 10 your- past, it's 10 past 10 now, but it's been, it's been great catching up, Mark. Yeah, good. I love it. Thanks for being so open and honest and always fun, and uh, I, I hope to see you guys soon. Cheers, right, dude. Cheers. Take care. All right, cheers. Thanks for getting so personal. I had no idea this was going to happen, and yeah. I just was so proud of the conversation that they shared with us yeah. and their feelings and life, and a lot of people don't want to open up. And when they do, they don't realize how many people it helps. So, guys, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, Also, as you know, uh, we continue this podcast, but we can't do it without you. So if you love the podcast, you want to give back, join patreon.com slash inside of you. I'll write you a message after. And uh, it really helps the show. It keeps the show going and going. I get my own guests and uh, I got Ryan here and Bryce and and Jason. And without this perfect team, um, it's kind of the perfect storm. Without one of them, it's just uh, not it, – it wouldn't be as good. But we want to keep them around. And I want to keep doing the show. So um, there you have it. So thanks for all your support and love throughout the years, some of you months, some of you days, new listeners. Um, if you want to find out all information about me, where I'm going, the band, uh, cons, just go to Instagram, the Michael Rosenbaum, and go to my Linktree link, and it shows you everything where me and Welling are going to be, cameo, all that stuff. So I hope you'll, uh, hopefully, I'll see you around. And uh, thanks for being here. Anything else, Ryan? Really? Not really. We're no, all here. No, we're here. <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. We're, we're we're doing this thing called life. We're doing it. Yeah. Guys, live a life, Jerry. And now it's time to read the top tier patrons whom I couldn't do this without. You know who you are, but let me remind you of who you are. Ryan, why don't I say uh, uh, patreon.com slash inside of you, become a member, get your name shouted out, tons of perks, packages sent to you. But why don't we, uh, I'll do a voice and see if you could mimic. Oh boy, okay. Posture. Nancy D, Leah and Kristen, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E. Brian H, Nico P, Robert B, Jason W, Sophie M, Raj C. That was pretty good. Joshua D, Jennifer N, Stacy L, Jamal L, Janelle B, Mike E, El Dan Supremo. 99 more, Santiago M, Chad W, Leon P, Maddie S, Melinda N, Dane H, Sheila G, Brad D. Ray H, Tabitha D, Tom N, Talia M. Hey, Michael. It's Dave Hall, <laughs> Betsy D, Angel M, Rhiannon C. Corey K, Dave Nixon, Michelle A, Jeremy C, Brandy D. What's another accent we can do? Sean Connery. Oh, yes. No, I can't really do him. <laughs> Lovely. All right, what? how about... um? Let me tell you something. Brandy D, Joey M, Eugene and Leah, Corey, Jacob B. There's a hard year about them. Uh, Eugene and Leah, Corey, Jake B, Angela F, Mel S, Christine S. Eric H, Shane R, Andrew M, Tim L. Amanda R, Jen B, Kevin E, <laughs> Stephanie K, Jor L, Jamin J, Leanne J. Now it's uh, sports announcer. Okay. Here's the picture on the way. Luna R, base hit to left. Mike F, there's a double to center field. Stone H makes the play, throws over to Brian L. And Kendall L retires all three batters. Kerosene's pitch on the way to Jessica B. Jessica B skies it to Kyle F out in right field. Kyle, Marisol P coming over from center to make the diving catch. Throws it to Ky- Kaylee J and dabs the runner. Mickey L at second. Wow, that was was some game. I'll tell (laughs) you, Brian A has a fastball that you just can't seem to hit. Uh, We've got Ashley here, Ashley F. Ashley, what do you have to say? Well, this is actually Marion Louise L. Romeo B here. Actually, I was talking to Marion. Veronica Q. (laughs) 
Uh, Frank B, we'll just get done with you this. Jen T, Nikki L, April R, Cassie B, Derek N, JDW, Michelle L, Combom, Ginger. Ginger Insomniac. Ginger Insomniac, Rachel D. We love you guys. Thanks so much for the support and love, as always. We try to have fun. We try to give you something special every week. I'm Michael Rosenbaum from the Hollywood Hills in California. And I'm Ryan Taze. I'm also here in the Hollywood Hills in California. Little wave. And uh, be good to yourself. Damn it. Be good to yourself. I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. Thank you.